August 1st, 1905, Helen was born in Lowell, Massachusetts to Edward and Carrie. She attended public schools through high school, after which she enrolled in college, receiving her bachelor's degree in 1926, her master's degree in 1928, and her PhD in 1931. She started college as a chemistry major, but changed fields of study when her astronomy professor took the class on a field trip to witness a total solar eclipse on January 24, 1925. She later recalled, The glory of the spectacle seems to have tied me to astronomy for life, despite my horribly cold feet as we stood in almost knee-deep snow. While pursuing her studies, she met Frank, a Canadian Harvard graduate student, and the couple married in 1930. In 1931, the couple moved to Victoria, British Columbia, where Frank had been hired to work at the Dominion Astrophysical Observatory. During the Great Depression, public institutes were not allowed to hire both husband and wife. However, Helen was able to obtain permission to use the telescope to carry out unpaid astronomical research on star clusters. In addition to the restriction on hiring spouses, few women were allowed to access the observatory since it was deemed inappropriate for women to work alone with men at night. Ironically, the same factor that prevented Helen from being hired, her husband's employment at the observatory, allowed her to use the facility for research. In 1935, Frank was hired by the Department of Astronomy at the University of Toronto, and Helen was able to perform research on a volunteer basis. The two scholars carried out most of their studies at the David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, just north of Toronto, with Frank serving as the observatory director from 1946 until his death in 1951. In 1936, Helen became officially affiliated with the University of Toronto's Department of Astronomy as a research assistant. By 1941, the departure of many men on faculty for the Second World War had created opportunities for women, and she became a lecturer. Helen became a full professor in 1957 and was named Professor Emeritus upon her retirement. In her dedicated decades-long pursuit of interstellar discovery, Helen used the David Dunlap Observatory's immense telescope to take thousands of photographs of the Milky Way. Through methodical research and analysis, she produced more than 200 scholarly reports and articles, including a catalog of 1,116 variable stars in globular star clusters. Given this work's importance to the astronomical community, updated editions were printed in 1955 and 1973. Beyond the academic realm, she popularized the field for a broader audience by giving lectures that were broadcast on the radio, hosting an eight-episode television show, and writing a weekly column entitled With the Stars for the Toronto Star from 1951 to 1981. In 1976, she published her most famous book, The Stars Belong to Everyone, How to Enjoy Astronomy. Helen's prominence as an astronomer led to directorial positions in many scientific and astronomical organizations. She was program director for astronomy at the U.S. National Science Foundation from 1955 to 1956, and president of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada from 1957 to 1959. Named a Fellow of the Royal Society of Canada in 1946, she served as President of its Physical Sciences section during 1960 and 1961. In 1964, she was named the first female President of the Royal Canadian Institute, the nation's oldest scientific society. She was also the founder and inaugural president of the Canadian Astronomical Society in 1971. Helen's success extended into business. She was one of the first two women appointed to the Bell Telephone Company of Canada's Board of Directors, a position she held from 1968 to 1978. 
discovered in 1980, asteroid number 2917 was officially named after Helen in 1984. The National Museum of Science and Technology named its observatory in her honor in 1989 and the University of Toronto's Southern Observatory in Chile named its telescope after her in 1992. When this observatory closed in 1997, the telescope was moved to Argentina, but the name was retained. Helen Sawyer Hogg has been recognized publicly with numerous awards and accolades. She won the Annie J. Cannon Prize from the American Astronomical Society, and was the first Canadian and second woman to win the Rittenhouse Silver Medal. The Medal of Service from the Order of Canada followed, along with the Klumpke Roberts Award from the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, and the Sanford Fleming Medal from the Royal Canadian Institute. Helen was promoted within the Order of Canada to the rank of Companion in 1976. In 2004, she was posthumously inducted into the Canadian Science and Engineering Hall of Fame.